Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I am Darren, I'm your host, and today we have a special guest, Mrs. Tina Cannon of Tina Cannon Cooks, and also the winner of American Barbecue Showdown on Netflix. That's probably where you know her. I can't wait to talk to Tina about her career and how she got started. I'll be right back with Tina Cannon of Tina Cannon Cooks. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey, all I want to introduce you to a company I just started working with, Fresh Jack's Organic Spices out of Jacksonville, Florida. They're a small, family-run company that's fast-growing. I've tried a bunch of their different seasoning blends and spices, and I can tell you they are all fresh, all organic. None of them contain artificial flavors or sweeteners. None of them have anti-caking agents or preservatives. They all taste like they were just made for you yesterday. Check them out, guys. They're on Amazon in the link below. They have different sample packs, different blends. Like I said, they also have the individual seasonings and spices as well. Fresh Jack's Organic Spices. Check them out, guys. I love them. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I am Darren. I'm your host. And today I've got a great guest. I've been wanting to get on for a little while now. You all have probably seen her if you've watched the Netflix show, the... uh, American Barbecue Showdown. She is the winner. She is Ms. Tina Cannon, Chef Tina Cannon, because you are actually a chef. And yes. uh, she is here to join me today. And we're going to talk about all things that she is doing. Hello, Tina. Just tell hey. us where you're from, who you are, and all that, and we'll get going. Well, Tina Cannon, I'm from Noonan, Georgia, originally Gasden, Alabama, but I live in Noonan, Georgia. And I'm a chef for Meals on Wheels of Coweta, a large charity. Now, you started that. Did you start that after you won the show, or is that something you you've been doing for a while? Where the where you been the chef for the Meals on Wheels? Yeah, I've I've been there a while, but actually, I started by donating to them uh, all of my meat from barbecue contests. That's how I met them. And one day, I got a email from them. And they say, hey, you know, we we need somebody to help us cook here. And I thought about it. You know, I've been going there every weekend, you know, donating meat. And I said, well, what about me? In the email, I hadn't pushed send. And a minute later, I had a phone call. And she said, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I would love to. So I've been there ever since. Well, that sounds like it's you're giving back to the community and also, you know, being able to make a paycheck as well. And it feels like I'm, I'm sure it's that's one of those jobs that, you get paid to do it, but you'd probably do it for free because you're you're helping a lot of people. So yeah. Well, it's not really pay per se. It's um <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, you have to sign off on the meals. So there's there is some pay involved, but it's not like uh if I was a chef in Atlanta or something, what I Oh yeah. Done. No, if, definitely. I don't I'm not there for the money. If I was <laughs> exactly. It's not Definitely one of those jobs not. you're getting rich doing, that's for sure. No, so let's I talk give a little that bit to my community. That's that's the whole reasoning in that. Yeah, let's before we get too far deep into what you have done and what you're doing, I want to talk about where you got started in cooking because I've I've heard some of your other interviews and, and from what I understand is that you were a teenager when you decided you wanted to make, you know, culinary arts your career and you Ran away to Europe, I heard. How, <laughs> yeah, how'd this all start? Yeah, that was right after high school. You know, it technically like Girl Scouts. I was interested, but the boys got to cook on the fire. So I had to volunteer to do dishes in order to help. And then, um, you know, I, my dad burned everything on the grill, but I got my first Weber at like 10. So I really didn't realize that was the path I was going. I just mm-hmm. knew I liked to do it. And I loved home ec class. And my mom will argue I never cooked, but about five things at home. But I I had a teacher that would let me do whatever in the class. And it was kind of cool to be able to just cook in a big kitchen. You know, we had a commercial kitchen in high school. So that's what sparked my interest. That I would have to say my home ec teacher and um, I had a, uh, her name was a counselor that encouraged me in the high school because I, I loved it. And I never shared that with my parents. They, they didn't know I liked to cook really, you know, but I used to cook with them in the kitchen. 
uh, and my grandfather, he loved to cook. He raised five kids, country cooking, you know. I used to mm-hmm. love to watch him in the kitchen. So I think all of that conglomerated, and I just decided to do it. And when I got there, it was, you know, a rude awakening, a little girl, 18, that had never spent the night away from home other than her cousin's house or the girl across the street. You know, I, you know, I was kind of very sheltered. So it was, you know, the early 80s when I went and the punk rock scene was big and the hostage crisis, you know, during the Reagan era, the 444 days. It was a, a frightening time. I didn't realize it, of course, until I got to <laughs> Europe. But there was a lot going on. <laughs> and, now, did you study uh, in France there. or where, where did you yes. study? In uh, France. I was in a uh, school called La Varan, <laughs> which has been since ate up by Cordon Bleu. Okay. Uh, I think uh, they were ate up like in the probably the 80s or not. No, the 90, 94, I think, is when Cordon Bleu kind of bought them out. Kind of an old school culinary school. Uh, culinary school here in the U.S. is a little bit different, especially now. It was almost militant. Uh, with inspections and things like that, so <laughs> really uniform different. inspections and everything. Yes, and your hands and your <laughs> nails. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Yeah. Now, did Plus, you speak the language, or did did you have a learning? No, you could learn. Curve? You could teach. They taught classes in other languages. Um, okay. I'm really good with accents because <laughs> you know you had French teachers that spoke English, or you had uh, you know German, a lot of German and Austrian teachers. You know, but they spoke. English, but you had to kind of change your schedule, you know, based on because you only spoke one language. You know, European uh, students often spoke two and three languages at least. So I was at a drawback in that. But I also went to culinary school in the U.S. Now, how long were you in France before you came home? And, and three studied? years, three years. Wow. And then I went again in the U.S. <laughs> and that was also a three, three year program. Now, when you were over there for three years, did you actually actually work too, or was it strictly oh, yeah. going to school? Yeah. Uh, no, I did both. Like when they, they have a, a difference back then school was a quarter system. Uh, and you would have breaks in between and they would help you with getting jobs, you so know, work in restaurants rest- and all. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I uh, had some rough ones. That's for sure. But different types, you know, in different countries, you know, if it was a, you know, a two week, Versus, you know, a month off or whatever. So I got to experience work in a lot of different countries and different cuisines. Now, did it change your mind about being wanting to cook or did it actually make you more passionate about it? Because I know a lot of people, it, it can go either way. You know, once mm-hmm. they realize what it is to work in the restaurant business, <laughs> you know, it could turn them off or, you know, it can make them more passionate. Mm-hmm. I think it gave me more drive because it was so rare for women at the time. Food Network wasn't around, any of that. I think it was gave me more drive and determination to continue. And that's why I, you know, I got told no when I got back to the U.S. They didn't hire women, you know, or they wanted you to be a pantry chef, you know, make salads, you know, right. or are you a baker? You know, no, you know. Um, so I went ahead and got an American degree culinary degree so they couldn't tell me no and of course I was an honor graduate there too um it made me just more determined and almost like angry <laughs> that, <laughs> that I could I couldn't get hired I mean I, yeah. I, were, I think you've heard on other interviews I had to work for free I mean yeah. it, it took a, it took a while it took a while yeah, I, know, I know a lot of people do that too they they do the stages so that they can actually mm-hmm. learn a lot of them do that to learn instead of going to culinary school, they'll yeah. stodge so they can learn certain techniques or certain mm-hmm. aspects of the kitchen as well. But yeah. how different was studying in Europe than studying in, in the American culinary schools? I think a hundred percent. I think American culinary school was comparing them now. And I hate to say this almost trade school. You know, not that anything's wrong with a trade school, but it was so different. Mm-hmm. And it cost me more money too. Uh, more business, the business part of it right. uh, versus actual technique. Mm-hmm. That's just the way I saw it, you know. But, um, you know, I learned from both, you know. What I do yeah. now, you know, it's it's helpful because I need to know some of the 
the business part of it and managing, you know, food for a large charity. I, mean, I cooked over 42,000 meals by myself last year alone. Wow. That's a lot. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so starting from there, so you, you, you found your passion, you went studied mm -hmm. culinary school. When you got out of culinary school, you said it was hard to find, you know, work now. Airborne so where did you, end, how did you end up landing, uh, landing your jobs and, and staying in the profession? I think sheer determination, working for free. They could see how dependable I was. You know, I just, it, it didn't matter what shift. I mean, I think I had people throw at me, just crappy jobs. I was a dishwasher at one place. <laughs> hey, I did I, that. I did that yeah. when I was young. So, <laughs> well, I, because they, they wouldn't hire, and I was a runner, right. you know, we're just getting stuff out of the pantry, mm -hmm. getting stuff out of the cooler. I think just the sheer determination in that, that one chef that really gave me a break. Um, I was washing dishes and we had a no show and he put me on the line. You know, nice. he, I think it was a joke to him at first. And then, you know, he saw a hustle and I stayed on the line after that. And it was a nice. very, very fine dining French restaurant in Atlanta in an area called Buckhead, which was, you know, very high end. So he's who gave me my first true shot. So if Jeff Barta, is listening. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll make we will make sure he listens. We'll call him up. And make sure he gets. Uh, I think he's in Colorado somewhere. <laughs> so, have you ever had a desire to start your own restaurant? I did that. Been there, done that. I okay. had a business partner in uh, Tampa Bay. Matter of fact, because you're not boy. far from me. Yeah, in Carrollwood, and I had a place there for a, a while. I think I was ahead of my time. It's what was the name Quick of the restaurant? It was called Quick Cook, but it was um, a concept that's very popular now because everybody has food delivered, you know, the meal prep kits. Uh -huh. Okay, but this was a long time ago. Before that was, you know, you could deliver overnight and, you know, Amazon, it, before all of that. And it was a pickup carryout type business of meal kits. And then since we were there prepping anyway, we did kind of a breakfast lunch service, you know, and then we closed. We didn't serve dinner. But uh, so it was way before its concept, but we did quite well. And then after I don't know how long we did that, then finally dissolved that. And I took a little bit of time off to do something else for a while because I had chef burnout, which, you know, happens and you just go oh, do yeah. something totally different, you yeah. know. And I, matter of fact, I did a show. I have people ask me now. I did a show on Travel Channel in 2014. And they listed me as a floral designer. <laughs> as my and at the time I was doing floral work because I'm pretty talented in it. I have an aunt that's very skilled and like does magazine covers and all of that. So I've always play, you know, played with it. I like to do it. And uh, it's so funny. I have people now say, that show you were on 2014 said you were a floral designer. That was during that period of time where I was burnt out and decided <laughs> to do something totally different. I was doing work with the, with the PGA and some other large organizations mm. like that, the Ritz Carlton hotel. So, I mean, I exceeded in that immediately. That's the type of person I am, whatever I do, I do the best that I can. You throw yourself into it. That's kind of like what yeah. I do. I, when I start something, even if it's a hobby, like what I'm doing mm -hmm. now, I just mm -hmm. throw myself into it. I learn. people ask me, you know, well, how'd you start doing this? How'd you put this together? And it's like, I just, threw myself into it and I just it. did it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just did it. I mean, that's 99% yeah. of anything you want to do. You just start doing it and you, yeah. you learn and you make mistakes and you've learned from those mistakes yeah. and then you go forward. So that's, that's why this like interview like this is hard when you ask like questions. It's like some questions I'm like, well, I just did it. You know, it's not really an answer. No, you know? I, and it is, that is an answer because, yeah. you know, I have people all the time ask me, you know, how did you start, you know, the podcast? How did you start your YouTube channel? How did you just do it? You know, you just got to say, you know, I, I can learn something new. Don't be scared to learn something new or ask people for help or ask people to, you know, that, that do it or have done it before you, how they've done it. I mean, that that's one of the things I found when I first started doing things like this is that there's a lot of people out there that will help you. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the ones that are really successful, they're not competitors of yours. They, yeah. they want to help. They'll teach people all the mm -hmm. time. That sounds like what you, you like to do because yes, 
I've seen, I, I, I went through YouTube and I saw a lot of your old stuff. I mean, some, some of your, you know, really old stuff. <laughs> There's some really old videos with, with you doing some other things with the, the Bama cooks and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and I, you yeah. know, I like to teach at the local culinary school, you know, too. I like to, to give back, not only give it back to my community, but to show them how to do things. You know, they're all wide eyed like I was at one time. And it's, it's so encouraging to see them want to learn. You know, I'm terrible, as you know, with technology. Um, <laughs> So I, I need to trade out some of those students to teach me technology <laughs> if I teach them to cook or do certain processes. <laughs> now, speaking of technology, there's been a lot on both the indoor and outdoor cooking um, areas in the last few years, a lot of technology being pushed into those, even for the mm -hmm. home users with the oh, yeah. pellet grills and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all the different types of cookers, you know, the sous vide, you know, the, yeah. you know, I know has got the uh, home based combi steam oven that they're marketing. So how has that affected the way you cook? Have you changed it at all? I know I did see a video you using sous vide uh, a couple of days ago and when you, yeah, videos. I was, yeah, duck, you know, that's something that has been around a lot longer than people realize. I think they say it was founded in the 70, early 70 or 71. But technically, if you look at like when bird's eye, and the vegetable company started doing frozen products or canning ready to eat food. The process was the same, you know, yeah. of cook, yeah, under pressure, you know, and liquid. So it's been around a while, but as far as like chefs or the way we do it, it was probably in the seventies. And now that was just commercial back then. Right. And now, I mean, you can go and buy one, I, well, I don't know if the big box Walmart store sells it, but I mean, you can oh, yeah, get that. Do. do they? You, okay. you could get them at Walgreens actually in Aldi oh, really? so, oh, for 50, God. 60 well, bucks. Anybody, yeah. anybody can walk into just about any store now and buy a sous vide circulator. Yeah. It's just, well, that's they, how they know, are. I, it makes things like easy. And I think if home cooks will not be afraid of it, you know how a lot of people, matter of fact, I have a friend on Facebook, Jimmy driver. Hey, if you're listening, um, he wrote me cause he sees me use my Instapot which I love, you know? Mm -hmm. So he went and got him an Instapot. So now he's asking me about sous vide. It, <laughs> it, once you're not afraid, a lot of people are afraid of like a right. pressure cooker. You old school, like my mom, terrified. Uh, she won't do it. But once you try it, it yeah. makes it so easy if you're not a really good, especially a meat cook. You know, people have a hard time with getting the doneness, you know, when you got to, you know, your husband eats it rare and you eat it medium and your son eats it this way, you know. So you're, you're jumping off point there. You know, it's perfect. You're just basically searing it, you know, um, and it makes everything much tender and you can infuse flavor in it. I mean, it's it's something that I think in another five years, uh, it'd be like as normal as a, a blender. Oh yeah. 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 And it's, you're right. Because when I first started looking at CV, this was three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. The first thing I looked at it and go, wow, this is so similar to low and slow barbecue because it's, it's low and slow. Exactly. It's just lower and slower and, then you're using, lower. You're, and you're using a water bath. So, it, but it's the same thing. You're breaking down collagen, you know, on those tougher meats, you can take them mm -hmm. out to stupid times like 48 to 72 hours and turn them into something that you can't make any other way. So the new crock pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, but it, it's so much, you know, I love people who they, they get excited about one part of it, but then they start expanding into different things like, you know, yeah. infusions and things like that, that, that it can do. I'm part of the international sous vide association. And that's one of the things I love is teaching people how you, you can get excited about one part of it that gets you going. And then there's so much more that they can do. It'll open up a door. It's just like anything. It's mm -hmm. just like cooking, you know, you can get, oh, I, I make a great hamburger, but now I want to make a great, you know, uh, you know, grilled cheese sandwich. And you just mm -hmm. expand on that. Now you mm -hmm. want to learn how to make something you want to make chicken. Now, how do I make chicken? I mean, it's just it, things start rolling and, and you can see how the, the doors kind of open up for you. So you, you know, kind of go ahead. 2000. I don't remember. It was a Sunny's contest they had down in Florida. Sunny's had a big, giant barbecue contest. And they had a mystery meet, and Cargill Meat sponsored it. And uh, we were given boneless, skinless turkey breast. And I won. 
And guess what? I used sous vide to make it. Really? Yeah. And that wow. was, yeah, I don't know, 2016 probably. I'd have to Google it to see when I want it. But in that, you know, it was kind of not as common, you know, there. And I actually used a um, sous vide that another team from Florida, I'll, I'll think of his name while we talk, loaned it to me. And I used it there on site <laughs> M1. That's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. So let me, let me talk to you about that. Now you're talking about cooking competitions. So you started out culinary school, you worked in the restaurants. What got you involved in cooking and in, in competitions? <laughs> Barbecue competition, watching pit masters on TV. Yeah. You got yeah. you excited. <laughs> yeah. It was like, Oh my gosh. Cause you know, I had got a smoker, a Brinkman matter of fact, from, points on a credit card <laughs> and um i cooked for a bunch of people at my house and i everybody every podcast has heard this story and the guy that showed up there was a crew working at my house i'll shorten it some and he showed up to get his money and i was feeding the crew and he wanted now of course you know i'm a southerner sit on down you know and eat with us and he looked at my husband and told him what good barbecue it was well i had cooked it so, it, you know, we talked, he told my husband a couple more times as he got another plate and he went to his truck and brought an application, <laughs> filled out the application for a contest in Lake Martin, Alabama. And I went and won. Nice. Right out now, the gate. Now, how different was that from what you had experienced before? Because, you know, you had a, you had a benefit, I think, because you had all the culinary training and know how to know how to put flavors and stuff together. So <laughs> well, how different part, was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. How, now how but, different was it in the competition? Cause you're cooking for judges and it's, yeah. I know it's totally different than cooking totally for your different. home. <laughs> yeah. And, totally. restaurant. and what I, and what I cook for barbecue, like here, like if you were coming over to hang out at the pool or whatever is so much simpler than yeah. for a contest, you know, because they inject contest phosphates, this, that, MSG. It, matter of fact, we did a practice cook this weekend of all four meats. And my husband and I looked at each other and I thought, because mm, we, we haven't competed, you know, because of COVID in a year. And yeah. we hated everything. And, you know, this is the same recipes that we, you know, placed and won with. We hated everything. I said, my tongue is still tingling from all the MSG, you know. <laughs> And the texture of the meat is like gone because it's all the phosphates in it, you know. So it tastes like del. You know, the texture was like del. It was just so different, you know. Everybody cooks for the judges, and they know what you know. They've shigged, and they know what, or they went to barbecue schools, which everybody has, and they're using the same thing across the board. And I don't. Right. You know, are you a barbecue judge too? No, I'm not. Okay. I never. I, I never am. have. But I've talked to. I've okay. talked to plenty of. I don't even competitors do and I've talked to, you know, Malcolm Reed and yeah. a lot of guys local here that, that compete and they mm -hmm. all say the same thing. They never cook at home what they cook for a judge because never. You're, you're going for the one bite. You, nobody can eat yeah. Johnny Triggs ribs at home. I mean, you don't want to make those ribs at home because yeah. you don't want to take parquet and honey yeah. and agave and mm -hmm. you know, five or six different sauces and yeah, brown know. sugar and four <laughs> rubs and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, you know, yeah. that's just foolish. And I was telling him, look at all this stuff on the counter. Cause I just built a filming kitchen to do my videos in out, not in the main house. The stuff is just everywhere. I'm like, all of this, this whole stack here is just ribs. <laughs> Why? You know, it's just, I, I'm hoping that the taste, the judges taste and a lot of people that's changed who's coming and who's not coming as far as judging that maybe kind of going back to simpler. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to do another practice cook this weekend. Cook another Wagyu brisket. Now, have you ever done any of the state cook-offs, the SCA? I think I've in the past, it's been several years ago. I think I did two. Those seem but, you to be know, growing. How wonderful. Show up with a spatula and, and some seasoning, yeah. you know, versus a rig and all this and $300 <laughs> to enter and you know, and then, $500, yeah. $600 worth of meat and all that. Wow. I, you know, I'm considering uh, maybe doing a little more of that. 
Well, and I've talked to a lot of competitors like Malcolm Reed and stuff, and they love them because mm-hmm. they say they're more like what barbecue com- competitions used to be like. Used to be. I remember yeah. just since I started in the end of 2009, first part of 2010, how the competition started. And I don't know if they changed or I changed. I, I'm not sure, you know, because I never saw it to be clicky and now it is. Um I see myself following suit with the seasonings and all the stuff, you know, so I don't know if I've just kind of changed or no, it changed. I, I, I don't I think know. it's just, you know, it's a natural progression because now I see the SCA events starting to go the same way of you got to have the grill marks, you got to have it round. And it's like, I look at some of the stuff that they put out and it's like, I would never, <laughs> if I go to a steakhouse and I order it, I would, and that came to my, I would throw yeah. it out and say, that's not what I ordered because uh, a ribeye is not like, supposed to be round. It's not it's supposed to be, round, <laughs> you know, and it's not, you know, I don't care if it's got perfect grill marks. I want it to taste good. And it, it yeah. seems like they do a lot more for appearance and because I guess there's only a certain amount of thing you can do. If it's a steak, it's a steak. You got to cook uh-huh. it perfect, make sure, you know, it's seasoned right. And it's got to look good. So they put a big emphasis more on appearance and they they would anything else but i think yeah. it's just like anything it gets a natural progression and it gets more and more and, and you got to try to do something different but when you got limited things you can do yeah. <laughs> they all start to look the same you know <laughs> and then what do you do Little Everything, round hockey pucks with if they all diamonds. they all look the same and they all taste the same you just kind of close your eyes and go eeny meeny miny mo at the end if you're a judge so i still think i might i might just because of lack of barbecue contests I might get out there and do a few. Why not? Yeah. Now, I miss I miss seeing people. Yeah. And now is that your main <laughs> main reason for doing the competitions is to, you know, the more community function of it or or is it to win? Or I mean, because <laughs> it's not cooking good barbecue, you kind of admit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um it's I, I I like to compete. I'm a competitive yeah. person by nature. So I mean, I do miss, like at this point, since we haven't been to a contest in so long, um, I, I miss people, of course. But, no, it's the competition. You know, it kind of gets your bubbling, you know, your blood yeah. bubbling and stuff, you know, especially if you get a call or, you know, get a great call in a category or something, you know, it really gives you, it energizes you yeah. to want to go do another one and do better next time. Now, have you done any other type of competitions like maybe you know i know you did like a world food uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. challenge i uh, did fba gba aba kcbs ibca so, so you've done a, done a bunch done, so that yeah. means you spent a, a lot of money <laughs> yeah 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 big truck big rig yeah big smoker <laughs> <laughs> now All is that your stuff. Is that what you're most passionate about now is barbecue or are you still passionate about all types of cooking? All types of cooking. All types. It's just barbecue is the more competitive. It's the competitive end. The rest I just love to just cook like, let's cook Greek food today, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So you do have your own, I want to share the screen because I want to go over your website here so people can know they can find you online under your website is Tina Cannon oh, yeah. Cooks. And, yeah, um, that's me. And you are doing a subscription or membership type mm-hmm. um, program on here where you do, are you doing like cooking classes and all that? Yeah, a lot of every every uh, month we release some more recipes and tips. But there's things that if you, I think somewhere on that site, you go at the bottom where it says, you know, there's other recipes on there. There's some right. that, Re- you know, recipes that you don't, and- don't have to subscribe to. Gotcha. Yeah. And the, oh, yeah, get on, oh, I hadn't looked at my site in a while. There's all my affiliates. No, it's moving. It's back. All right. There's my, there's my Cody on there. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so you also got um, uh, your Facebook page so they yeah. can find you on Facebook. And then oh, yeah. everything, everything is under Tina Cannon Cooks, correct? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, you know, I'm getting old. It's easy to remember that way. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram and TikTok. That's on there that way too. Teen and Cannon Cooks. And now you started a YouTube channel. Now, how long ago? It looks like five months ago you started that. I, I, you know, I started it actually longer than that, but I really didn't know how to work it. And I'm still learning. I have people <laughs> write me almost every day and ask me to do videos on certain things, but trying to 
keep them short or how to yeah. edit because I don't know how to edit. Uh, you'll learn. I, 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 you I, see I, on there or is unedited. <laughs> it's, it's one take Tina on there. So well, y'all here, don't here's write a tip. nasty uh, emails. Here's a tip. You're using, it looks like you're using your phone to do most of them, correct? Yeah. To, so just turn your phone sideways so it'll make it widescreen. Uh -huh. that, so that, that way they'll see the whole screen. Like you got one on there, the barbecue care package one. You see how that's widescreen and the other ones. Are, ah. So if you turn your phone sideways, it'll make it so it's a widescreen. So yeah. it's just, there's, when I first started YouTube, I was just like you. I didn't know how to do anything or edit and putting mm -hmm. stuff together but you yeah know, i don't people, know how to pe edit. people are really nice and usually they're kind of nasty and mean they'll tell you stuff in the comments oh yeah <laughs> like I get, I like like nice. you need better audio or you need this or you need that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah they're not very nice but you, you you know that's one of the things you learn is to uh like, ignore <laughs> ignore what the people are saying <laughs> yeah <laughs> but some of it you can take to heart and just say but yeah that's well, good know. to know because i noticed some of them are that way there's my i see my dog yeah yeah, yeah. so and all these different platforms are, um, they're fun to play around with. And one of the things I learned and I like uh, when I talk to other people, they have the same thing is there's different people will go to different platforms. So it's always good to have a little bit on every one of them. You know, just, I can see mm -hmm. here, you got a, you've got a big following on Instagram. You don't have a big following on YouTube and your Facebook page isn't that big, but what I've noticed in my personal stuff that I do is that there's a lot of people that will be in my Facebook group. Some of those people will be on my page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Some yes, of them may be on YouTube. So it's like, yeah. I'll have like 14,000 people here, 400 here, 300 here. So they're not all going to this, all your different platforms. So one of them, some of them just stay where, you know, some of them will stay on Instagram and they'll like you uh -huh. on there, but they won't go to your Facebook page or your YouTube channel. So you just got to kind of put something a little bit of every on everywhere so people can find you and, 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 uh, you know, no matter what, but you're not going to ever bring all your Facebook people to YouTube or mm -hmm. Instagram to YouTube or, or Facebook. So it's, uh, always interesting to expand out a little bit and they're all yeah, it's like curves. on tick and tick tock, you know, it's, um, if you watch the videos, they're very different about what people <laughs> like in content. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. everybody everybody has their own personal preference of what platform yeah. they want to watch you or, uh -huh. or uh, react to you on so i didn't it's even always... know about tiktok or instagram not too long ago so yeah well you've got a you know pretty good following on on instagram so far so that's good but um yeah that's just I've, that's one of the things i've always found is that you know you, you go to one platform and you'll have hardly anybody and then the other one you've got all these other people but you can't pull those mm -hmm. other people into the other one yeah, so. I don't know. And I started like a, a group on um, Facebook. Uh -huh. So instead of just Tina Cannon, I have, I didn't know what to name it, but it's called Tina Cannon Cooks Community. So that's right. like a group. And we're just sh like to share recipes because a lot of people like to send me pictures of my well, recipes how, that they cooked. <laughs> that's how I started. I actually started a Facebook group and it grew so fast that I decided to expand out into other things. So my Facebook group has over 14,000 members now, but you know, like my YouTube channel, I only have 6,000 subscribers. So you would think that I would get, you know, 10,000 or 14,000 people on YouTube, but yeah. nope, it's just doesn't work that way. But, and you know, then I've learned that you can't do a video more than like three minutes or something. Attention span now is really short. Yeah. That's usually with YouTube, it's it. like Heck, eight, eight to 12 minutes. Hardly, I can't even say hello i'm southern in three <laughs> minutes i you know so i yeah oh well i'm working on it i'm trying to do better and i do appreciate the some of persnickety messages i get well and that's where the <laughs> that's where you when, when you learn how to edit that's when things start to uh get a little bit easier for you i mean i yeah. i spend a lot of time learning how to edit and all that kind of stuff too so i've got like three apps that's supposed to say it's <laughs> easy to app easy to edit and i'm i can't i don't know how to cut things out because i get wordy it, it has like a little line where you can like blend them <laughs> together but it's like how do i get how do i get this out where i went yeah. on a tangent about something you know what? The best the best place to do that is YouTube. Guess YouTube's good for learning how to do stuff. <laughs> I guess I'll need to get on YouTube and look at some editing. People show me how to edit. 
Hey all, I want to take a second and talk about Inkbird's brand new instant read thermometer, the IHT-1S. This thing has a lot of great high-end features and a very affordable price. It is 100% waterproof with an IP67 rating, a 2 to 3 second ultra fast response time, backlit, fully rechargeable, no batteries to replace. This thing has got all the high-end features that you would want in an instant read thermometer. Very durable. So check it out, guys. Check out the Inkbird IHT-1S instant read thermometer. I think you're going to love it. It'll be your go-to instant read from now on. And now back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. All right, so let's get into the big competition that you got into. And this is, uh, I know you've been on TV before because I saw some of your other stuff that you'd been on you know some other shows here and there but the big one uh-huh. that everybody knows you for i'm sure is the american barbecue showdown on netflix yeah. and that one um probably puts your name out there so now you're almost a household name because people i know you in the barbecue facebook groups that i'm in i mean everybody was talking about that especially i know a lot of people in georgia because there was so much georgia representation oh in yeah that. that's because in georgia i hate to tell you that we know how to cook some Q here. <laughs> so uh, I think three, at least three of the competitors uh-huh. were uh, yeah. from Georgia. So yeah, how did that all happen? How did you get in touch with them or how did they get in touch with you? Or did they, you know, see some stuff that you did online and then they, they contacted you? Know, you or? I'm still not sure why they contacted me. It, <laughs> they, it, it was on Facebook. I got a message and I thought, what? Yeah, I don't know who these people are, you know, and I didn't answer and it. I don't know, a week or two later again, I got the message and I didn't know what I swear when I went, people think I lie. I had no idea what Netflix was when I should, even when <laughs> I went and I'm actually glad that I didn't find out till I got home from the show because um, I might have kind of freaked out a little more than I did I, because I didn't know because I didn't I don't I didn't know what streaming services and I still don't really get it uh but now, did, did you think it was like a just a local show or something like that or well I didn't really know I thought it was just, you know I, I you know I didn't know I really had no <laughs> idea until I showed showed up there and I got out of the you know, they put us in this black Mercedes van and when I got out and saw the how many people and the crew and all the special equipment, I knew that, okay, this is, you know, I'd already been on two other networks and it was nothing like that. I mean, it was something. I mean, really. And the people were so professional, you know, uh, on the crew and everything. I, I knew it was different, but I had no idea because we were not supposed to be really in contact with people and talking about it. I'm a rule follower. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't. So I didn't find out till I actually got back. You know, of course, my mom and my sister, you know, and my husband knew somebody had to know why I was gone. (laughs) And uh, my sister was like, I can't believe you're going to be on Netflix, you know, and I couldn't tell them that I had won. Right. You know, (laughs) they're trying to get at me, you know, and I'm like, I didn't say anything because you know, you got this big contract, you know, I was like, sure. they're going to take my house, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I didn't know it was like a mean. You're locked, you're locked in your basement. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. They, before COVID. Anyway, so I didn't know, you know, but I didn't know until my sister actually told me, you know, this is worldwide. And she was showing me online. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, because I didn't know, I honestly didn't know what a subscription service. And now that Every other commercial is Google Plus, you know, and stuff. You know, now I know that it's bigger than like regular networks. You know, I don't, I'm from old school. I don't get the concept of <laughs> just watching a home fix it show at three o'clock the morning, whenever you want to. Right. You know, I have to have a schedule. I'm scheduled. Okay. A TV Red guide. <laughs> yes. It, it's yeah. a TV guide. Yes. Yeah. It had five channels and a TV guide. Yeah. You know? yeah. You know, I'm used to, to that way. So it's really hard for me to think about watching something and like right now when you yeah. and I finish, I want to watch blah, blah, blah. I, I don't even think that way because I'm so scheduled. Right. <laughs> you know, it's so, my nature. I got to know. <laughs> So when they signed you up and you agreed to do this, did, did, did they just 
all right, well, you just come and show up this day and, and you would be ready to cook. <laughs> uh, that, well, they told me that what day they were going to, they came and picked me up and, you know, took all my bags and stuff. Cause they told me to bring a bunch of clothes. And the biggest question is why did we wear the same clothes every day? That is the number one question. And they had me bring like 30 outfits, you know, shoes <laughs> and everything. I like, I packed up all and I hate packing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like to carry a carry on when I go somewhere and take as little as possible. So it, that was difficult for me to pack up all these outfits and then get there, not wear any of them. You know, I was either in that red shirt, T-shirt that was all <laughs> ugly and baggy shorts or my pajamas when I was in the hotel room. I mean, that was pretty much all I ever wore. So uh, it was uh, overwhelming when I got there. You know, and there's drones and a and couple hundred cars parked out in this field by this beautiful barn. So I think I was like really over, really overwhelmed, you know, and I still didn't know why is it such a big, you know, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you got started, did you all of a sudden kick into con competitive mode? I mean, did all the uh, butterflies go yeah. away or in the, yeah, right, like, it's a competition. Yeah, I'm going to do think it. About it. Yeah. And you know, I had never cooked on any of those type of grills. I compete on a gravity bed, so I'd never cooked on any, any of them. <laughs> uh, I had a different type of ceramic grill at the time. Uh, luckily now I'm a green egg ambassador, so I have a green egg, but um, I had never, never had cooked on one before. So evidently I did, Pretty good. I winged it. <laughs> you That's my style it. of cooking. Wing it. Just wing it. <laughs> well, I don't it, my recipe. You want it by winging it. So, now, it, I mean, I think some of the best cooks, some of the best cooks cook that way. I know that's the way I always cook. I don't, I don't, I can look at a recipe and get an idea from it, but I don't yeah. follow a recipe. Never. To, you know, if I'm baking, I do because, you know, when baking bread and something, you got to yeah. kind of do that for chemical I don't reasons. Bake. But yeah, I don't hardly ever either, but mm -hmm. for cooking a recipe, I'll look at it to get an idea, but then I add my own here and there, you know, a, a good cook will know how to put the, the flavors together. And mm -hmm. especially because it, it's all personal taste anyway. So, yeah. you know, and I cook a lot by aroma. Right. I, I love, so I smell er like everything. I, you know, it's like, there's an old joke when you go to culinary school. You go up to your chef and you check in for your inspection. Do you like to get up early? No, chef. Next line. Do you like to get up early? Yes, I'm an early riser. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Baker, chef. Baker. You know, and, you know, I'm, baking is not my thing. I'll eat it if you cook it for me, though. Yeah. Baking a cake, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> but I ain't baking. Funny. I'll make a biscuit. You know, I make very basic baking i can get by i mean i do cook for a lot of people i can get by but it's it's not my thing because i don't like that measurements and I, I weighing oh, yeah. and i don't like that gotta be too exact <laughs> with baking that's for sure yeah i don't like, I like to <laughs> you, just can't throw it. It you can't wing it you can't wing it you can't wing it too much <laughs> so when you first got started did you look at it and go you looked around at whoever else your competitors were and go i can mm -hmm. win this thing right away no <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Especially once I saw the equipment, I thought, you know, it was like that guy. In that what movie. have I got myself into? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, home alone. <laughs> it, that was exactly, exactly what went through my mind. Oh my gosh. And I've committed to being here until whenever they tell me I could go home. You know, they didn't tell you like, if you won, you stayed, or if you lost, you left. I mean, I didn't know, you know, can't believe I did that because I'm such a structured person. Yeah. I still can't believe that I said yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could be gone a month. Okay. You know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was not prepared at all for any of that. I, I literally, I swear, just winged it. I don't think when a couple of people asked me for recipes and I put it on my site, like I put the cobbler, you know, because I know that that was a family recipe. It, I had to really like think or go. What did I use it. there? Yeah. <laughs> and like What, what did I? Yeah, exactly. Cause I, I just don't cook that way. So it's very difficult to repeat something. Right. I don't think I've cooked the same spaghetti sauce. You know, I did a YouTube video and I had to cook it. <laughs> 
and write it down like roughly how much I put in there so I could reproduce it for people because a lot of people ask for that. Yep. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. When I first started doing my videos, that's, I, I don't cook that way. I don't cook by recipes. Yeah. I don't write stuff down. I just kind of, in my brain, I know what works well and I throw it all together and I know I taste it and go, well, I need a little bit more of this and that. And yeah, I just don't write stuff down and I'll do that. I'll make chili and I'll make it totally yeah. different next time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, so when you started, you got through the first couple rounds and all that, mm-hmm. did you look around and go, okay, this is the person I got to look out for, or this one's mm-hmm. going down mm-hmm. soon. I and mean, did you start in your own mind thinking that way, or were you just concentrating on what you were doing? Gosh, you know, I think I, I was concentrating on what I was doing, but I think in the back of my head, I knew Sylvie for sure. Cause she's very competitive and I know her from competing at world food against her and we're, you know, talk online and, uh, and Rashid, I knew for sure. Cause he, you know, I think sometimes when you're on a TV show, they might portray you as more novice than you are. Yeah. Uh, so n- none of us were novices. At all. No, I know new I know people who knew Rashid or before and they said mm-hmm. he's not a novice. <laughs> no. he, some of the no, stuff it, that he was like going, Oh, I don't know. They go, Yeah, he knows because he, yeah. he's cooked that several times. So yeah, like tri-tip. I was like, Yeah, what? You know. Yeah. Uh, when he said he didn't know what a tri-tip was, the guy well, he works at like a Atlanta grill company. He's done like catering events and stuff mm-hmm. for them, and they knew that he <laughs> he's cooked tri-tip for us several times. He knows what he's yeah. talking about. But his so. flavors, I mean, you know, were fantastic and spot on. They really were. I loved his style of cooking and his uh, persona on on the show. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, and he uh, definitely did his, a good job. So I mean, yeah, so. his jerk sauce, oh, delicious. Loved it. Cooks Could like him and you seem to do the best in these type of shows because you're used to winging it and, and throwing stuff together mm-hmm. out of, out of whatever you have available in front of you, you know, mm-hmm. the people that do better on like chopped and stuff like that, are the people that can think outside the box, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that's why you and him ended up in the final round is because you were both that way. You know, you're not, well, thank you. You're, you. <laughs> you're just, you know, you, you, you work with what's in front of you and you've done it before you've done it for so many years that, mm-hmm. You, you already know what works well together and you can put stuff together with whatever you got. Yeah. And we had a nice pantry. Um, it did change. It wasn't always yeah. the same. So if you thought you were going to have brie cheese today, you know, and you had it tomorrow mm-mm. and you better not <laughs> mention it because you're mic'd up and all your producers, you know, your handlers and stuff. I really, I don't know for a fact, but it was kind of interesting if I mentioned, oh, if I get to cook this or something, suddenly it they wouldn't take be it away. There. <laughs> just saying. Just I just... don't know. Just saying. So, you know, it just, maybe it was just a coincidence. So when <laughs> did you feel um, during the competition that it was going to be you and Rashid, or did you think it was, was going to be you and him at the end? When did you know, like just the, when, when you last won, or, I mean, were you shocked at all, any of these, any of the rounds that you won? Um, I was shocked every time. <laughs> uh, people would ask me, was that like, a, I was shocked every time. I mean, I knew my stuff was good, but you know, I, I knew his stuff was good and I know Miss Sylvie's stuff is good. I really thought that that us three, honestly, just because, we tasted each other's food and I know there's, you know, I could just tell they really out of everybody, in my opinion, knew what they're doing out of everybody. I think Grubbs, I loved him. His personality loved him and we still are in contact. Um, I, you know, I think they were tough on him. Um, but his, I thought his sausages like were good, but like some of his sides, he lacked a little bit. And I think they were looking for the full circle on everything. You know, I don't think you could bomb on one thing and then one thing be good. You know, we had to cook multiple dishes every time. Now, let me ask you this question, and I'm, I'm sure it doesn't get asked often, but 
Because sometimes as a somebody who watches shows like this, you go, how much does personality play into what the judges think? Even with Melissa, you can tell sometimes if somebody didn't say the right thing that she wanted them to say about something, she mm-hmm. would get a little ticked off. You could tell that she's, I didn't like that, you know, but she'd ask somebody a question about, you know, what are you going to do with this? And they'd answer and she'd walk, turn around and she'd make a, you know, nasty face or go, oh, I don't <laughs> like that. So how much do you think personality or, um, you know, that played into their decision? You know, when I watched other shows like this, I thought that that was a factor. But being there and knowing that the three people that I thought was the best cooks made it to the finals, it kind of made me dissipate thinking that. Because uh, Rasheed definitely and Sylvie definitely deserved to be there, I think, Um, out of, out of the three of us. So I, I used to think that though. I mean, maybe some shows are written that way. I didn't well, and it feel might be that part while whole, I was there living it. I didn't it might be part of the that. drama that they try to inject in it. Because I know yeah. just from watching Melissa mostly is, she, you know, cause she's a, she's one of the best, you know, she's yeah. been yeah. a competitor. She's been a judge. She's, you know, mm-hmm. she was part of the, you know, barbecue community for many, many years. So right. And it just made out some of the competitors. She would just, you know, shake her head, walking away from them. You're like, oh man, she's already yeah. made up her mind before she's got the food in yeah. front of her kind of thing. Yeah, I think, I think she's just a no nonsense person. And honestly, you know, that, that could have been editing, you know, they got to make it interesting because there yeah. was a, a lot, there was one challenge that was totally cut out. There was a lot of editing. It, it was when I watched it, it was very different than what I thought we would see. And I don't know if that was because of COVID. There was editing during COVID or, you know, I don't know their demographic of their audience because like I said, I didn't know what Netflix was. I don't know how they, there was a lot that they cut out. A lot that I thought if they had left it in was really good TV. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, not even just stuff that happened that I'm like, why'd they cut that out? You know, <laughs> why'd they put that? There was so much other really good crap that could have been put in there that they didn't, that, you know, but who knows? Like I said, I didn't. Okay. Know give me an that. example. What did you do? Did you like trip over your foot and drop something or what happened? Uh, Rashid tripped. Oh yeah. Uh, like in the first challenge, like majorly. Um, I spilt something on me and my, area and it looked like I'd read on myself. <laughs> uh, you know, just just cry, you know, other, you know, uh yeah. just silly stuff because you know the monotony of it, things that yeah. happen. I mean, they you're, cut you're, all that out. You're you're doing a lot, you're excited, you're you know mm-hmm. all things going through your mind and yeah they and made me I'm like familiar really with sick. all this stuff and yeah, and I, yeah. I can I can tell there's there should be things going on. Oh, you know, people constantly. falling over each other and dropping yeah. stuff all day long. Yeah, yeah. running, crazy. fires going out. You know, yeah. everybody had problems with one of the particular smokers. I won't get into which one. Uh, you know, and then we didn't use it again, which I thought odd. You know, we ran out of wood. Like, <laughs> God love Rashid, but he burnt so much wood in the barrel. You know, when we were, he went through so much wood because he had a ring there and he just kept fire burning because he made his own coals. And then after, it appeared to me that after Georgia saw it, she started doing it. So we went through so much wood, they had to have more wood delivered. And we were in a rural area, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, so, and we like, we're running out of charcoal. So I think we went through a lot more stuff than they realized. <laughs> and it might have been, you know, because some of us didn't have, at least me, knowledge of one of the particular type of smokers you know the lang which i loved i wish i had one now uh you know i just kept charcoal burning because i thought i was you know i didn't want it to go out on me you know because right. i saw it went out on georgia i thought Heck, i don't want that to happen to me <laughs> i i had my I, you know i wouldn't necessarily shigging what people were like cooking with because i kind of had a plan when they told us what to do but i was kind of watching and learning and i learned i can say from everyone there, something I brought home with me, you know, which is kind of cool, you know, knowledge, knowledge of cooking, making me a better cook or a better barbecue cook. Awesome. So what's next for Tina Cannon cooks? Are you going (laughs) to uh, write a book? Are you going to (laughs) continue 
continue doing what you're doing with your website and YouTube, expand that out and yeah. keep working. I, well, you know, I'm looking at my website, like um, the guy that, that kind of built the site for me. I, I guess a lot of people don't buy cookbooks a lot anymore. So having it on the site, uh, a subscription service to me kind of reminds me of like a digital cookbook. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting recipes on there. They should be loading some more on the free part, you know, where you don't have to subscribe uh, shortly. And we just filmed 18 bit new videos. They're going to release, you know, a, a few soon, like a three or four soon. And then they'll do three or four more. And we're scheduling them to come back and film again in late April. And we'll film mm -hmm. a bunch more. So I think I'm just going to continue with that. Lordy mercy, it keeps me busy. Um, yeah. I have interviewed for another show in May final round, but I don't know yet what's happened on that. Uh, can't say which one, what network, anything, but I have yeah. interviewed and I know I made final round. That's all I know. So I'm hoping to find out soon. If I do get chosen, I'll be gone for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Y'all probably noticed from my social media. Huh, she got it. You know, maybe. <laughs> so we'll see. Hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> now, have you looked at other other people that do similar things to you, like uh, Susie Bullock and uh, Hey Grill Hey and some of the others where they have like a subscription service and uh -huh. then they have the free content? Um, yeah, I, I've had her on a couple times on my show. I and, love to watch her. <laughs> yeah. And she's really good. And she's she, precious. She, and she, uh, and her husband helps her do that. And they do a lot of similar stuff where they have a subscription side and then they mm -hmm. have a free side and then they, you know, they actually have people helping them doing their YouTube and, and their mm -hmm. Instagram. And that's why I told her a couple of times, I wish I had, you know, a couple, you know, teenagers working for me doing this stuff. I know. It would help it out. But, um, you know, now once I you wish get big I had enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there you then, go. <laughs> then, then I would have somebody help, you know, but I kind of, I like it because I'm learning something and, yeah. and, you know, I appreciate people writing me, even like I say, the snarky messages, because it makes <laughs> me learn more. Sure. And I'm I'm just going to just keep doing that. I, you know, I don't think I make enough money to hire and have people, you know, I right. don't, you know, and I don't know, even, even though I have people write me literally every day and say sweet stuff and want to know recipes or want to interview me. And I appreciate all that, but I don't, I don't want to be, one of those people that have to have people. Right. <laughs> I, I, it's not. You don't want me. an entourage. <laughs> it, you know, if you want to come hang out at the pool and let's cook, that's fine. But no, I just don't. I don't think that's my personality. You know, yeah. I'm just Tina Cannon. That's it. <laughs> I'm my dog cook. mom and I like <laughs> to cook. You know, that's, that's, you know, but it, it, it's been like a, fa a great experience. You know, when I sit back and like, look, gosh, I've been on. Three major TV shows. You know, I don't, I don't, it's like I'm looking or thinking about somebody else. Right. I know that sounds silly, but I just never thought of me that way. I just living my life and cooking and doing good for others and, you know, having fun, competing in barbecue and, you know, being a good dog mom. Well, that's great. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being on. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to following you and watching. You didn't ask me anything hard. No, I never, I never asked anything. I hard. thought you were going to like dig in there. No, just no. I just, you know, cause some, you know, you never know what some people will think is hard and some don't. Uh -oh. I'm always pretty easy. I just like to, I, I like to dig into where you started and how, what, how yeah. your mind works. And I, you, your mind works similar to mine. You like to teach, okay. you like to, you like to cook, you like to eat. I mean, you know, that's what else is there, right? Enjoy. And life. I like to share. It's, you know what? It's the only, I don't have a lot of talent. But I think I'm a, a good cook, um, whether it's higher end or just, you know, we're making spaghetti sauce at the house. So that's the only thing that I can do. It's the only yeah. talent I have. So that's what I want to share. Otherwise, you know, I'm just here at my house and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not doing it to make, you know, to be rich either. So you're doing it because. No. You enjoy it. You enjoy, I love it. It. you enjoy it. So that's yeah. like, that's exactly what I do. I do it because I enjoy it, but I really appreciate you being on. Well, thank I, you. Uh, I hope to have you on again and we'll talk about maybe some other show that you have been on and, maybe. and all that, but hopefully your website and everything grows. And I really appreciate you being on. 
I appreciate it too. Yes, and and yeah, if people go to my YouTube, y'all, and you can write me at Tina at TinaCanningCooks.com. If you want to see some videos or something in particular, just send me a message and let me know. I'll do it. And I'll put the links in the description of the podcast okay. below. As long so as they it's can... not tuna fish. I hate tuna. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's ways you can make tuna taste good. I know you I can. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I want to thank Mrs. Tina Cannon one more time at Tina Cannon Cooks. Check out the links below where you can find all things Tina Cannon. Make sure you check out the Fire and Water Cooking YouTube channel. The video podcast is also on there. Make sure you check out Fire and Water Cooking on uh, Facebook, Instagram. And make sure you check out the Fire and Water Cookbook on Amazon or on my website at fireandwatercooking.com. See you on the next podcast.